Now let's look at a couple of examples of how do we handle distributed loads. I'm going to do two examples. The first example, I'm going to actually go ahead and find the reaction forces of a beam. On the second example, I'm just going to find the equivalent point load for a particular distributed load. All right, so let's start. So for the first, for first example, uh, I want to have, I want to find my reaction forces. And my system is going to be something like this. Let me move this a little bit over here. Very good. Uh, we have a simply supported beam. That beam is four meters long. Uh, but we're going to have that this support is not going to be at the very end. So we're going to have a support right here. We're going to have another support right here. Uh, the distance between the first uh, between the supports is three meters, and then the remaining of the beam, this part over here, is going to be one meter. And on top of this, we're going to have a uniform distributed load that is something that has the same magnitude all along the distributed load. And the magnitude of that distributed load is going to be two kilonewtons per meter. All right, so that, that's our problem. And what we're trying to do is to find the reaction forces on that, on that particular beam. All right, so the first step is to find the equivalent point load to that distributed force. And the reason is now when, when we have the point load, we should be able to do the rest of the analysis. The rest should be easy. So I want to find my equivalent system. And this is, I recommend you do this diagram uh, for the first few times until you actually get um, used to do this type of analysis. So do a, another diagram of your equivalent system. So it's going to be the same beam. Notice that this is not the free body diagram, right? This is a diagram that's going to help us with the analysis of that, of that distributed load. And in that equivalent system, we're going to see that we're going to have a point load somewhere. I don't know exactly where. And we need to define three things. We need to define the magnitude, we need to find the direction, and we need to find the location of that force. All right, so the magnitude is going to be the area of that distributed load. What I mean by that is, let me change the color here. Um, if I take this as a rectangle, right? What is the area of that rectangle? And the height is going to be the magnitude of that distributed load, and the width is going to be the length of the beam, right? So let me change here to white. So the length of the beam is four meters. The height is two kilonewtons per meter. So we know that the magnitude of that point load is going to be eight kilonewtons. That is four times two, right? Four meters times the two kilonewtons per meter. The next step is to find, uh, is to find the direction. And as, as we discussed before, the direction has to be in the same direction as the distributed force. So the distributed force is going down, therefore, my point load is also going down. And then last, we need to find the location of that distributed force. For the case of a rectangle, we know that the centroid is right in the middle of it, right? Somewhere in there, right in the middle of it. And since it's the middle of a four meter length, then this distance from this side to the force is going to be half of that, right? It's going to be two meters and then the other half is going to be two meters to, to the right as well. All right, so now that we have our equivalent system, the next step is what we've done before. We're going to do my free body diagram. So here at the bottom, I'm going to do my free body diagram. And in that free body diagram, I'm going to have my beam, no support. I'm going to have my Reaction forces, let me change colors because those are unknown forces at this point. So I'm going to do those in red. One over here, 
one over here, another one over here is going to get confused with the beam, but there is an unknown force right there. When I label them, I'm going to call this, um, let's call this AY, let's call this BY, let's call this BX. And now we need to put our force. And our force, I'm going to use my equivalent point load uh, instead of my distributed load. So let me get, let me turn my camera off. I've got a little bit more space. Uh, so the force that I know is that A kilonewton force. And that A kilonewton force, I'm going to go somewhere in here. A kilonewtons. We need some axis, x axis, y axis, distances. Um, the distance to the point load from the left side of the beam is 2 meters. And the distance between these two unknown forces is equal to 3 meters. I can put the additional 1 meter, but I don't need it for the, anal for the analysis. I'm going to put it right there. This is 1 meter. Okay. Now that we have our free body diagram, we know what's next is to um, write our equations of equilibrium. And for those equations, equations of equilibrium, let's say we're going to start with the sum of the forces in X. Uh, those have to be equal to zero because we are in equilibrium. And the only force that we have in the X direction is BX. So we know now uh, bx is equal to zero. Now I can do, uh, let's do the sum of the moments about a, and the sum of the moments about a has to be equal to zero because we are in equilibrium. And let's see for that a kilonewton force is going to be a negative moment if you use your right hand rule, and the value of the moment will be 2 meters times 8, so it will be minus 2 times 8. And for BY, we're going to have a positive moment based on the right-hand rule, and that's going to be 3 times BY, right? 3 times BY. So nothing new from what we've seen before. And AY does not produce a moment about that point, about that point A. This over here is A. Um, so we can say that that, um, we don't, that particular unknown is not in the equation. All right, solving for by, uh, we can say that by is going to be equal to 8 times 2 over 3. And we can say that that is 5.33. That's the four significant figures, and that will be in kilonewtons. Or, to report my answer, 5.33 kilonewtons. Now we can do the sum of the forces in um, a y direction equal to zero because of equilibrium. And what forces do we have? Well, we have um, Ay, which I don't know. So Ay going up, so it's positive. We have the A kilonewton force coming down, negative. And we have this 5.3 Three, three, three. I guess we can use a fraction for that. Um, uh, going up as well, so that will be positive. Now solving for a y, we can find that a y is um, two point sixty seven kilonewtons. So that will be the way to solve a problem that has distributed loads. So the key again is when we go back up here, is to add that step at the beginning of the analysis of finding the equivalent point load to that distributed force. Now, what happens when you have more than one distributed force? And that's what I want to show you in the second example. Now, in this example, I'm not going to go ahead and, and find the reaction forces. I'm going to stop in the equivalent forces because as we're going to see, you can actually have a couple of options for that. So let me turn my camera off again. And in this second example, um, so I'm going to put this one over here as number one. This one over here, I'm going to put number two. And all what I want to do is to find the equivalent 
uh, point load. Find equivalent point load. load. I'm going to put an S because it can be loads, as I'm going to show it in a second. So let's say that we have a system um, that looks something like this. Maybe it is also a beam, just to make it simple for now. Let's say that this distance over here is one meter. That's going to be a distributed load that is uniform. It has the same magnitude, and that magnitude is two kilonewtons over a meter. But then after that, let's say that that's going to change. That's going to become a triangular force. All right. So the magnitude of that force is going to decrease uh, as a uh, function of the distance of that beam. Let's say that that's also one meter, just for the example. So in here, I actually have a couple of options. I can actually find an equivalent system where I have two forces, one for the rectangular uh, distributed force and one for the triangular distributed force, or I can find a single force that is at the centroid of the combined area of the rectangle plus the triangle. So let's see how that works. Let's see. So Let's do this. The first one they're going to do is do the equivalent when we have the two forces. All right. So I'm going to have my miss the same beam over here. Okay. And if we're going to have two forces, that means they're going to have one force somewhere corresponding to the first uh, area. And let me let me change colors for that. Let me do this in red. So for this area over here, for this distributed force, I'm going to have this force over here, right? And let me do something. Let's see what we choose. Let's try green and see how that works. For this triangular force, I'm going to have a separate, um, a separate um, point load that is somewhere over here. Right. So there are two different, two different forces. One for the red, one for the green. In the red one, to find the magnitude of the red one, uh, what I need to do is to find the area of that rectangle, and that would be if the height is two kilonewtons per meter, so it would be two times the width, which is one. So this over here is going to be two kilonewtons. And for the triangular force, we need to find the area of that triangle. So the height is two, the width is one, so it'll be two times one over two. Um, that will give me one kilonewton. So we have the magnitudes. Very good. All right. The directions are there, right? They need to go down because all of that force is going down. And now what is left is to find the location of those forces. The location of the red force, we can say that is at half of a meter from the left-hand side of the beam, right? And that's where the centroid, the centroid of that rectangle is located. So the centroid for this is somewhere over here, All right? The centroid. So that centroid is going to be at half a meter. So this distance is 0 0.5 meters. For the green one, well, I can, I can look at the location from the right-hand side. So the location from the right-hand side, what we're going to see is um, that the centroid of that is going to be somewhere around here, right? And that is going to be two-thirds of the length um, from the right hand side of the beam. So this distance over here is two thirds, two thirds, sorry about that, of a meter, two thirds of a meter. Okay, two thirds of a meter. All right, so that's, that's one option. 
finding two forces that are um, uh, and those two forces are going to help you with the analysis. Now we can we can deal with that. Now there is a second option, which is to find a single point load uh, that represents the whole system. So let's look, let's look and see how that works. So my other one, my second option, my second equivalent. Uh, let me do something like this, where we have the same beam. Okay. Okay, very good. And now what we're saying is, okay, well, I need to find somewhere, it's only one force right there. Okay, so if you look at this, we have a uh, triangle and a rectangle. What we need to do is to find the centroid of that combined section, right? So it's a composite section, that's what we have. So for the composite section, what I'm gonna do is, let's say, that this red is I'm gonna call that number one. And for the green, I'm gonna call that number two. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing that you did for the homework. So we're gonna have um, a section number, an area, and that area really is not an area, right? That's gonna be something that is in kilonewtons. We're gonna have my xi hat which is in meters. Uh, by the way, we need some axis. So I'm gonna put something here, X and Y, All right? And we need my area times my XI bar, and that's gonna be in kilonewtons times a meter. That should be a lower K, not an upper K, upper, um, upper case, it should be a lower case uh, K for the kilonewton. All right, so for the rectangle, we have the area. Well, we, we find it before, right? It is going to be 1 times 2. So for number 1, this is going to be 2 kilonewtons. The xi, we said that it was at 0 0.5. Uh, so my a times my xi, that's going to be equal to 1 kilonewtons meter. And for number 2, we also have some of the dimensions up in the uh, top right of the the diagram, so there's one over here, right, in the top right. So we know that the that's going to be one kilonewton. And then now we need to find this, this centroid with respect to the same x, y axis, right? So instead of being two-thirds of a meter, we need to take two meters to strike that. Uh, so that is going to, to be 1.333, all right? Multiply those two. And now we need to add this. Need to add this, this will be my three kilonewtons. This over here we have 2.333. And finally, what I can do is find my centroid, which is 2.333 over 3. That will give you 0 0.777 meters. So in that point load, we have that is a magnitude of three kilonewtons. That's going to be this number over here. And the location of that force is, is at 0 0.777 meters, right? And that is going to be the centroid. All right, so hopefully those two examples help you understand how to deal with distributed loads. Again, the key is to find a equivalent point load that then you can use to analyze the system.